brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. This is the Ramsey Show, where we help you win in life, win with your money, win in your work, and win in your relationships. I'm Ken Coleman, George Camel, with me today in another uh, fine-looking jacket. He's ready to go. The phone number to jump in is 888-825-5225, 888-825-5225. Now, you know, we're talking about serious stuff here, but George and I like to have fun with it. We can mix the two. So when we get together, we try to have some fun. Let's have some fun today as we talk about the very serious stuff. George is our resident money expert, and uh, I'm your resident income expert. I want to help you make more money, and George wants to help you do good stuff with it. So we're going to get right to it, and uh, I'm going to tease this, George. Okay. At some point in the show, our fearless leader, James Childs, will tell me, um, I'm going to, uh, we're going to get political. Whoa. That's all I'm going to say. Is this dangerous territory? Should no, I be? No. As a matter of fact, I think the audience is going to love it because it's a unifying statement, and it has to do with money, George. Okay. How about that? We can all agree on that. So no one now everybody can take a deep breath. There's not going to be anything controversial. No vitriol. No vitriol and nothing controversial. But it is that time of year, George. And uh, so more on that a little bit later. But first, let's get right to the phones. Heather gonna, is going to start us off in Knoxville, Tennessee. Heather, how can we help? Hi, thanks so much for taking my call. Um, my aunt, who was in her mid-70s, um, she's been a widow for about seven years now, has been the victim of a romance scam, we just found out. Oh, um, gosh. Is this like the, the catfishing that we hear about? Yes. Oh, um, no. On Facebook, a guy had reached out to her, oh, no. and she had been talking to him for about a year, and we found out, and we said, you know, this is a lot of red flags. We think this is a scam. Whatever you do, do not send this guy any money, and you don't need to talk to him anymore. Oh, no. But she did not listen to us, and we just found out that she has lost at least $23,000 in credit card uh, charges that we know of. Uh, we don't know if there's oh, more or not. Oh, my goodness. And she so she didn't send him money. Bill. She racked up debt in her name and bought him and stuff? Sent it, yes, and then sent him the money. So... We are trying to figure out what to do. Um, She lives off of Social Security. She only brings in about $1,200 a month. Her whole bank account was cleaned out, and um, we just trying to figure out how to go forward from here. Before we get to the money part, I just have to ask, uh, is there any potential help from Facebook and any of this or the credit card company on this? I mean, that's a good question. I have a feeling that it's from overseas because she was buying a bunch of um, $500 minute cards for phones that she was sending him. So it makes me feel like it's out of a lot of jurisdictional hands. Okay. Yeah, it's it's rare that anything can be done about this stuff. I just had to ask. I am just, my stomach has turned here for you. Oh, Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's horrible. Have you reported the crime at least to your your law enforcement's non-emergency number and at least have this on file? Yes. Yes, they've reported it. They're going to be getting all the details. Um, I'm not sure how much they can help, though, since she took out loans in her name and and things. Yeah, they're going to go, hey, this isn't fraud. You did this. Yeah. So, but at least it's on file and maybe they can, you know, track this scumburger who's doing this. You can also report it to the, you know, state attorney, FTC, at least to make yourself feel a little better. But the truth is we're going to have to rebuild ourselves here. Let's pretend Mm -hmm. like nothing is going to come from any of this. Um, Mm -hmm. What about this credit card debt? Have we cut up grandma's credit cards yet or your aunt's? Well, we're trying to just trying to. I don't know if we've gotten the full picture yet, but um, yeah, we're we've, we're going to get the business credit cards canceled. Um, her bank account. We had to close the bank account because um, what had happened was that she was going to get reimbursed by this guy. So we sent her a check, which she deposited, and it cleared and it was, for a few days. And, and then, then it's he bad. wanted. Well, yeah. Well, then he wanted a certified check out of that. So she turned around and wrote a certified check because the bank thought she had the funds, and then it cleared out everything that she had left, plus she went in the negative once they realized it was oh, a fraudulent check. Gosh. So they canceled that bank account, so it's like she doesn't even have that at bank anymore, so everything is So she has a new bank account now? 
but we're going to have to set one up. And her son is on the bank account, so that is one good thing. But I don't know if we have the ability to – I don't know if she should have access to, a, to an account, if that's even an option. If Does she can... realize what has happened? I think on some level, but I'm afraid on another level she hasn't really processed it because she keeps thinking that he's going to send her the money oh like he goodness. promised. Even now, it's it's very sad. How old is she? She's about 75. Is she is she having struggles with just mental acuity? Uh, I think she's just very very lonely. And you're the and you're the niece. Like yeah. where where are your cousins at in all of this? Uh, they are around. Unfortunately, they don't have a lot of financial security to help in this instance. But um, my uh, my aunt's sister, so my mom and, and everyone are trying to kind of gather around her and help where they can to help her get out of the negative on a lot of her bills, but that's about all that we can do. And, and okay. it's so were you calling us for ideas or were you calling us for some type of approval on something you're thinking about? That's what I'm trying to get to the bottom I, of. I'm wondering, is it moral or ethical for us to say, just don't even, don't try to pay back these credit cards, put those to the side and, and, and just let them go into collections and, Maybe at that point she can settle for pennies on the dollars if she will even have that money at that point. Or do we I mean, she, until... she truly does not have the money. And so right. I don't think there's anything right. wrong with saying, listen, she was a victim of fraud. Yeah. This is what happened. She doesn't have the money. She's yeah. living off of 1200 bucks in Social Security. It'll mm-hmm. be, you know, she'll be 128 by the time this thing gets paid off. Yeah, I agree. And the yeah. truth is, Heather, she needs to cover her four walls first. I do not give a rip about the credit card companies. She's got to make sure she's got food on the table, utilities are covered, her housing mm-hmm. is covered, transportation is covered. And the other thing you need to do is, number one, cut up her cards. And then second, you need to put a freeze on all of her credit. So all three mm-hmm. credit bureaus, put a freeze on it so that no one can open up account, including her. Yeah, I agree mm-hmm. with that. Good that idea. I'd do that instantly. I think the son does need to manage the money from yeah. here on out. Absolutely. She's shown that she's incapable, and she's still not even convinced this is fraud, which means it can continue to happen if we continue to give her access to more money. Absolutely. Okay, now that's a great point, freezing, freezing all of her accounts for the credit-wise. And um, do we need to get her to sign something to, for us to be able to do the money? Because I think she does have her mental faculties other than this gigantic blind spot. But is that – or do we just set up a new account? And you you might need a financial power of attorney unless they both say, hey, he, this is a joint checking account. The son is on it. Mom is on it. If we do it that way, you'll be fine. Okay. This feels like a family meeting, though. But, yeah, this needs to be a <laughs> – the fact that the niece is calling and tells me, number one, you really love your aunt, which yeah. is so sweet. Yeah. But I think we need to have a big family meeting go, here's the next steps yeah. that we're going to take. Yeah. And you lay all of that out that we just talked about. Yeah. If this were if this were my aunt or my mom, uh, there would be uh, an absolute come to Jesus meeting to make sure she understands she's been scammed. And this is not real. And uh, let's address the loneliness as well. Um, but, man, we got to rebuild here. And I would. this is a community thing. If, they're, if you're involved in a church... Uh, or a good community, I think you, you know you go to people and say, "Let's help her out." Maybe and, even third-party counseling, but, but for protect to tell her, her. By the way, before we help her, or else all those good deeds, George, and all that money raised for her, is going to go back out the window on the next thing. Wow, tough call. Don't move. We'll be right back. This is the Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show, where we help you win with your money, win in your work, and win in your relationships. I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell is with me this hour, 888 All right, uh, so we've been talking about this for a while, George, um, and it's going to be here before we know it. It's the very first. Now, we, we had this deal set up once before, and then we had this thing called a pandemic that hit. And so the cruise was no more. And now the Ramsey cruise, we call it the live like no one else cruise. Is that what it's called? Did That's right. That That's right? the official title. Do you know why it's called that? Because if you live like no one else later, you can live like no one else. So you can go buy a ticket 
and uh, and go on a cruise with us with Dave Ramsey, George Camel, uh, John Deloney, Jade Warshaw, Rachel Cruz, and myself and other guests. And you can just do that uh, by simply putting a deposit down, George, of six hundred dollars. You know why? Because you've got six hundred dollars. You got the margin. So this is for folks who have done the first part. They've lived like no one else. They've made the sacrifice. They pay it off the debt, got the emergency fund. They're investing for the future. And now we want to celebrate with all of those people on a debt-free celebration cruise. Are we going to be checking people's uh, baby step status at the door? That could be fun. I would love to volunteer to be that guy. You give you a clipboard, you would be so happy. Yeah. I know. How do I verify? Are we pulling credit reports? You can't. How are we going to do it this? It was a joke. It's a ludicrous suggestion. But uh, nonetheless, you got excited about it. But what if it. we freak people out as they try to get on board? And I go, no, no, no. Let's check that credit report. What, if, sure we, no what if we had Dave shoot a video? And it was kind of like an AI video of Dave. And you, you had to walk up and he would look you in the eye and you go, now before you get on this boat, I'm going to need to see your ticket. And I need you to look me in the eye and tell me you're in baby step four or higher. Are you? Did get you see the, him? Yeah. That would be kind of fun to freak people out. I got I to gotta see your DFE, your debt-free verification. Oh, see, look, you've already run with this. All right, George, tell them where we're going because the uh, the lineup is absolutely unbelievable. We're going to Turks and Caicos, St. Thomas, Puerto Rico, and the Bahamas. Yep. That's and an amazing lineup. It's a great, great, great lineup. We also have some good friends going with us. Um, Big-time chef Manit Shohan, Deanna Carter of uh, country music f- uh, fame, and uh, Stephen Curtis Chapman of Christian music fame. So we got a little something for everybody there. And uh, all the personalities, including Dave, will be speaking, hanging out with you. And uh, George is going to swim with the Dolphins. We're, look, we're looking at an excursion where you swim with George and the Dolphins. It's a synchronized experience. Yeah, so we're working on that. Uh, by the way, George swims in a swim shirt, so that's always worth seeing. And that's floaties. extra bonus. With the floaties. With the floaties. So here's the deal. You get a de- you get your room by just putting $600 down. That's all you got to do, the deposit. And uh, cabins are running low. We are going to sell out. They're expecting us to sell out uh, within the next month or so. So you don't want to miss that. Uh, and you can sign up right now. Book your cabin at RamseySolutions.com slash cruise. RamseySolutions.com slash cruise. By the way, George, I want to point out we have a lovely studio uh, audience out there in the lobby today. International. International. We, get, we have Scotland, got a guy Australia, from, yeah, and more. Yeah, it's unbelievable. So always fun to meet you fine folks. Uh, and we'd love for you to come see us. To the phones we go, 888-825-5225. Tampa, Florida is where Matt waits for us. Matt. How can we help today? Hey, thanks for taking my call. Sure, what's um, up? Hey, I'm separating from the Air Force next month or in a couple months, and I have a few job offers lined up for uh, airlines. Switch. I'm a I'm a pilot in the Air Force and okay. switching to the civilian sector, and uh, we're looking at uh, probably a forty percent drop in pay if I can start right away when I leave. We do. We did buy a house about two years ago here in Tampa, and we bought just before the mortgage rates, uh, or we locked in just before the mortgage rates started going up. Ended up with a higher rate than we bargained for, and um, it's it's going to be a little tight trying to keep the house. So my question is, with and especially with training start dates for a lot of these airlines, I have a few job offers, but they've all paused training. Mm-hmm for the remainder of the year and they they could potentially pause it further in the next year so my question is is it is it a dumb idea to sell our house and move in with our family which we kind of take a hit on equity um and uh we we might be slightly upside down in it um you know by in order of up to i mean we could break even we could end up losing like Having to pay out like thirty grand or something like that to okay. Let me, let me get let, out of all it. All right, but. let's. Let, there's a lot coming at us. So George, let's break a couple things down here that'll help us. First thing is uh, explain the training delay, and and in in context with, do you want to fly commercial airlines? That is your. That's where you want to be long term. Is that the fir- is that the case? That's right. All right, and so if they're delaying training, that means they're delaying hiring. Well, sort of. I've got three job offers. They just haven't. St- they just say we're not going to start you until they can train January you. at the earliest. Start you in training, which means essentially start you in pay in paying you. When are you leaving the Air Force? Uh, I, basically, I want to stop moving so much 
But do you have, have to are you like optional to leave, or is this like, hey, on this date, it's over? Or can you hang no, on to the Air Force I could, position? but the it's really important to me to be able to get with um, an airline, a major airline, at the earliest right. possible point. But if this and is the difference between you guys Force, losing your house, I'm going to go, well, let's pause on this career move until we know what it's going to look like and that we can afford it. Yeah. I mean, let's skip ahead then. So we're jumping around, but yeah. I think it's important to jump around, George. We don't yeah. like the idea, George, why we don't want him to try to sell a house and take a loss on this. It's like there's a whole lot of options before we get to that, correct? Yeah, well, and the question is how do we get you from the Air Force position to another position without a gap in income and without a loss of income? So what are you making now, and what are the job offers offering? So what I'm making now is about uh, taking a pay of 11000 to 12000 per month. And the first year of pay with any airline is you know, a, a little bit lower. So I'd be looking at about 6000 7000 per month. Even with your experience? That's right. The first year pay is always Does what your about wife work? lower. Does your wife but it, work? But it bumps right back up. My wife works. She's a nurse. She makes about 4500 a month. So it would still be a $40,000, excuse me, a 40% hit uh, in your first right. year. How quickly does it jump up uh, in year two? And does it get back uh, up to where you currently are, or is it still below that level? It would it would go back up to where I currently am. So the for only, one year, you got it. You basically got to float the forty percent difference in one year. But you don't have. I mean, being an airline pilot, uh, you don't have a lot of time for the side gig, do you? Or some something else that you could do to make up that money for one year and not lose the house. So that's true. And the the other big concern is what if they don't start training for longer? Why is this the only option? Could you not do cargo plane? Could you not fly private? Why is commercial day one the only option? So I could I could do other other things in the meantime. To I think you have to keep Matt. Income. Matt, you have to. You're basically telling us that we're looking at six months from today at the earliest that you would actually start to get a paycheck, and you're looking at leaving the military when? Uh, at the end of September. And and now I would get about uh, $15,000 $15, of extra pay with, upon leaving. But that's a that's and a month then, and a half. That's a month and a half. What's your mortgage payment? Uh, mortgage payment is about 3600 Okay. So based on our parameter, about a quarter of take-home pay, you would need to bring in about fourteen grand to make this house sustainable. Right. And right now, if you you and your wife, let's say you took the pay cut, it was seven grand, your wife makes five, you're at 12. So you've got a but little have, bit of a gap. I have other job offers that if they did start me, one of them is scheduled to start me, they could bridge the gap in between now and then. Well, you they just answered your question. Really could not. I, I think, George, we like that. I want to, we're wrapping, we're about shy on time here, George. I think we prefer he take that option, not sell the house. And you take can't the take a hit. job that brings home less than ten grand a month. So if you make that the one thing you're focused on, you'll focus. But you're on saying it not you sell that. the house. Try to avoid selling avoid the house. Avoid selling the house because delay your it. dream of leaving Air Force until we figure out what's next. Yeah, because yeah. this they could turn this house into something that's an asset. Yeah, moving in with family all because of an urgency to get out of this job. I don't see it. Yeah, I don't see I'm the with need. You. All right. Thank you for your service, Matt. Absolutely. We appreciate you. You're a great American. Don't move. More of The Ramsey Show coming right up. How you doing out there, America? You doing all right? You doing okay? You making enough money? You keeping enough money? Uh, how's the old relationships around money? Ooh, oh boy. It's awkward. Some of y'all still are trying to Venmo each other mm -hmm. and their spouses. Yeah. That's a scary scenario, yeah. Ken. How's that American dream idea the, to work, work really well, to work really hard and keep moving up, maybe start your own business? How's that going, folks? How's it going?
We're in an election year, George. And people uh, are starting to lose hope out there, Ken. There's a lot, or you, they're hanging on to hope for the wrong reasons. That's right. Yeah. And so we want your hope focused on your actions and what you can control. And that's what we do here. I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell joins me. Triple eight eight two five five two two five is the number. Devon, uh, is it Devon or Devon? We'll find out shortly. I'm going to guess Devon, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. How can we help? Hi guys, thank you so much for taking my call. You bet. Um, it is Devon. You are correct. Okay, good. All right. So my question is: uh, My husband and I, we have three children. They are 20, 18, and sixteen. And our rule has always been that if after high school um, you don't have to go on to college, that's fine if that's you know what you select. But you have to get a certification or a license, or work full time, you know that kind of a deal. Um, we have an eight, our 18 year old daughter. Um, she just graduated from high school in May. Uh, will not be going on to uh, a university. Um, again, totally fine. My husband is a public school teacher, and his insurance has recently changed. Um, as a result, if my daughter were to get a full time job that offers her insurance, she has to take it. She has special needs. She has a very rare condition that causes her to break bones very easily. She's had over 80 broken bones in her oh, 18 years wow. of life. Yeah. So, um, so she is somebody who very much needs her insurance. Her plan um, has been that uh, in August she would work full time at a retail makeup store like an Ulta or Sephora because um, that's where her passion lies. And then after a year, go and get like an esthetician license or something like that. My question is, because of the change in insurance, does it make sense to have her, like, to not not have her work full time, rather just have her do a part time for the next year and then kind of see where we are, or do we kind of stick to our guns and say, hey, this is the deal. You're you're an adult. This is what you chose, and then deal with the ramifications of you know retail insurance. I yeah I don't. My first pass is uh, I don't know that I would change the expectations for her. Now, I'm assuming that if she's careful and this role of, as a makeup artist or do, you know, whatever you call it these days, an esthetician, I mean, that she can do that with low risk. Is that true? Yeah. I mean, she. there's no rhyme or reason as to when she fractures. I mean, she, I mean, she's, again, broken so many bones. I mean, she can sneeze wrong and she can break a rib. Oh, like, so there's, heart. it's not so much that, you know, it's a you know, dangerous situation. It's just what it is. It is what it and is. And we've always. You're right. And we've never coddled her. Like, I know that sounds awful, but like, hey, you're broken. You have to go to school. So she was the kid in the wheelchair and that kind of a thing. So, again, we're kind of what we're trying to keep doing, like, now that she's an adult. But with this change in insurance, I mean, it's not if she's going to need it. It's when. Right. Um, But I I like the idea of her working full time and having her own insurance. It's time. But the stipulation was if she's working full time, which I assume is 40 hours a week ish, then she has to get her own insurance. Regardless yeah, if the employer a, offers insurance, yeah. Well, no. If if, if the insur- if the company she works for offers it, she has to take it. She yeah. can no longer stay on our okay. insurance. It's just the yeah. new insurance. See, Devin, policy. here's where I'm at. I don't know what George thinks. I, I I just I would not make a decision to limit her earning ability, to learn to limit her dignity building, simply mm-hmm. to save her a little bit of money on insurance. I mean, because in other words. Uh, it's like, well, if, uh, she could stay on my husband's insurance, but she has to only work part time. Which means the way I look at that is, is I, I'd, I'd say it this way. Uh, let me let me put it to you this way. Here's what I hear, um, Devin. I'm going to recommend to you. Imagine me saying this, to you, Devin. You tell me what you think, Devin. I think your daughter should make less money and be limited and almost on a fixed income uh, because I'd like her to stay on your husband's insurance. Yeah. No. No. I mean, okay. So you get my point. Right, right. I mean, she could get disability, but we have said absolutely not. You are capable of working. You're going to work. So walk us walk us through this. Let's say she's working at Sephora full time. She has insurance through Sephora. What are the downsides there compared to what you have right now? So if she, you know, ends up in the emergency room or she has a series, uh, a bunch of different specialists that she does have to go to, um, the copays are much higher. There's a much higher, you know, out of pocket expense. Well, let's and, be I mean, prepared have... for the out-of-pocket maximum, and let's teach her okay. how that works, and yeah. let's make sure she has that amount saved. That's a great point. And okay. depending on the insurance, we also don't know what the insurance is going to be. Let's look into that depending on the employer. Let's find out what the co-pays are. And then it becomes a line item in her budget that she needs to manage. Mm-hmm. As a working sure, adult, so go, 
this is going to be a higher percentage of my budget than yeah. all of my friends, and I need to be okay with that. That's right. She's going to have to effectively have a, I think, a line item in the budget that is, I'd call it copay. And and I just think teaching her how to be self-sufficient here, you guys are going to sleep better at night knowing that she's figured it out. And it's literally a function of saving and, and allocating that in the budget to go. It's kind of like a mini emergency fund, but it should be actually in her budget. And she going to okay. continue to live at home? What's the plan there? Yeah, no, she'll uh, she'll probably yeah she'll, be, she'll she has to live at home for the, probably the next few years. She, okay. Yeah, but see, I like that. But see, I like that because now she can stack more money away in that actual line item of copay or medical. Okay. Like she has a medical line item, and it's like a mini emergency fund. George, how does that feel to you? Correct me. I feel real good about this. And so show her, hey, we're going to get a high yield savings account set up for you. This is what an emergency constitutes. Mm -hmm. We're going to make sure we have the out of pocket max. Here's what your copays might look like year one. We're going to have that in the budget, and you're going to put that money away like a sinking fund. So that when and if something happens, you're going to be okay. You have the money to cover it. And I think that's that's going to really give her that dignity to go, I can take care of myself. Yeah, that's huge. While under the care of mom and dad and under their roof. So she has minimal bills while working full time. There's no reason why she can't put away money. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. I so, appreciate it, gentlemen. You're Thank an you. amazing mom, by the you way. Are, and that's a, a, I can't imagine you. the difficulty of that situation. Um, three kids, one with that special need requirement and i'm wishing her the best on her journey to become yeah. an esthetician yeah devin appreciate it guys thank hey, you devin can i can i yeah. put you on the spot i think you can handle this and if you if you don't okay. like this just say no and it won't be awkward at all but i just have a feeling right now george and i'm going to trust this feeling devin i want you to just speak to moms and dads out there you're you're talking to a massive audience right now and they've got little ones who have special needs all across the spectrum. It could be just anything. We just have no idea. And it is causing emotional stress, uh, mental stress, and financial stress. Feels like you and your family have really navigated this well. What would you tell those folks? They're in the midst of this, and they're feeling like maybe they're not going to be able to figure it out. Maybe they're just feeling like they're never going to get through it. What would you say to them? So our faith has been absolutely crucial in all this. We did not know she was going to have this disease when she was born. She was diagnosed at six weeks old. Um, so, again, our, our faith has just really what pulled us through. Also, my husband and I sticking together, um, really just kind of being on the same team. Mm-hmm. Obviously, getting out of debt was incredibly crucial because our medical bills were just insane. She broke her neck when she was two and had to be life flighted to John wow. Hopkins. So. I mean, that was a $25,000 helicopter bill. So, But we were able to do all of that because we were debt-free. Um, and so, honestly, what I would just say is you just, you know, special need parents, you know, God chose you for a reason. Um, we don't know what it is, but your kid is awesome. And you just keep walking forward and you do it together with your family or whoever is around you. And that's, that's how we do it. Wow. That's beautiful. Devin, thank you. Thank you. You, you, you really encouraged some people today. $25,000 helicopter bill george i mean you got a little one right now can you imagine i cannot imagine i mean first of all the trauma that would cause me let alone the financial that's aspect. what i'm that's what i'm saying from every aspect oh my here's your little one so what oh. i'm hearing is for special needs parents they can't go well the ramsey plan's not for me because we have different circumstances you have to do this plan if you've got that you I, have to I, stay I, I think it's vital you have to have the emergency fund that's what i heard from Devin, not from us and uh wow what a, what a, what a special family and uh, but then fun to see that you know uh, their daughter is coping, and not just coping, thriving, uh, winning, and thriving. And uh, thank you again, Devin. I hope that encouraged those of you out there that that are in that situation. We're here with you. We're here for you. Uh, this stuff will help you get through uh, these dark times and come out on the other side. Wow, great stuff, Devin. Thank you again. All right, don't move. Quick break. We'll be right back. This is the Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. Thrilled that you're with us. I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell is with me. The phone number is 
825-5225, All right, George, it's time for our question of the day, and it comes from Nick in New York. Nick says, I wanted to ask your thoughts on getting an American Express charge card. I'm completely debt-free and see there are major benefits in terms of points and airline miles for using these cards that you pay back the next month and never carry a debt. What is the downside to using them like a debit card? This is a a question we get very often, Ken, and the part that frustrates me is that you can't use a credit card like a debit card because they're so different. You're using other people's money and paying it back later versus using your money and paying it right now. And so you can't say, well, I use it just like a a debit card. What's the difference? There's a huge difference. Number one, uh, American Express, they're known for the charge card, Ken, which means you pay the full balance every single month. The where they get you is with very high annual fees. They're known for having some of the highest annual fees. They're also known for high, having the highest transaction fees. So when you have you ever seen these signs at a business? We do not accept American Express. You've seen those? Oh sure, because they don't want to pay the the, the, the they percentage. don't want to pay, and American yeah. Express has fees upward of three and a half percent versus you know a two and a half with the other cards. So right. the businesses are saying, hey, we're not going to take the hit on this. The consumer's paying big annual fees. And on top of that, what do you think happens psychologically when you're chasing the points and airline miles? Well, naturally, you go, we'll put a little more on the card this month. We're going to get it back, quote unquote, with our cash back. So why not? Yeah. And the problem is the credit card companies love this. There's a reason they're promoting these so heavily. They can devalue the points at any time. There's a reason they've moved from cash back to points. Because what is 100,000 points? Well, it's like two grand. And yet your brain goes, it's like Chuck E. Cheese. You remember going to oh, Chuck E. Cheese? That's why it works that way. You got a thousand tickets and you're like, oh man, yeah, I'm going to get the yeah. boom box at yeah. the top. Yeah. And, and they you, go, nope, you, you get, get a, a pack sticky of hand. sweet tarts. Sweet tarts and a sticky hand is what you're walking away with. <laughs> the sticky hand. And you still think, oh, I'm that's winning. Funny. So Nick, truthfully, as a guy who had the, I had the American Express Delta card back in the day, Ken, and the, oh. the Discover cash back yeah. card when I was 20, in my young 20s, before I knew the Ramsey plan. And I thought I was winning because I was playing these games, and yet I was not moving anywhere financially. I was, in fact, going backwards. And once I cut up the cards, used my own money, I created my own reward system Mm -hmm. because I was way more cognizant, way more intentional with the money, and I created my own rewards. I was able to save 2000 bucks to buy some flights at the end of the year by getting on a budget and using my own money. So simply put, the juice ain't worth the squeeze. The long answer, you can go read the credit card chapter in my book, Breaking Free from Broke, where I talk about all of this at length. Yeah. Hope that helps. Yeah, good stuff. Thanks for the question. All right, let's go to the phones. Jonas is up in Los Angeles. Jonas, how can we help? Hi, guys. Um, so I'm going to achieve baby step one by August 1st. After starting baby step two, when should I pause to save for a basically guaranteed and necessary professional move? How much would the move cost, do you think? Um, it, it varies. Um I'm not taking any of my furniture wherever I go, but I'm in early career academia, so I'm thinking 3K is like the barest minimum to potentially get me across the country and start over wherever I end up. Uh, Is it traditional in the academic world to offer, when they hire someone, to offer some type of a moving bonus? Uh, It depends on the position. If it's a tenure track position, yes. If it's like a visiting lecture position, usually no. And what are you going for? I have for everything because of my field. I, I don't get to be too picky. Well, why why make this move then to be a visiting professor or whatever it's going to be? Uh, what's the upside for you versus staying where you're at? I can't stay where I'm at here in my position here, and it does not renew. I have to apply for the job, like academic jobs this fall, and then I have to move accordingly and professionally it's better for me to leave my home institution where i got my phd go somewhere else and kind of get some distance and then pop around it's a weird job market okay well okay so george what do you say he, he thinks he's got about three thousand dollars we're estimating about three let's 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 round it up a little bit let's say three to five george yeah. What, what does he do? Well, you've got a thousand already with baby step one. And so if and when that the job comes to fruition, I would say let's pause the steps and let's quickly save up that cash. And that might mean selling stuff, might mean working extra, side hustles, whatever it takes to come up mm-hmm. with that difference to get you across the country. But I would also tell you I would do my best to negotiate and say, 
listen, I'm going to need as part of this job offer some relocation mm-hmm. money. Yeah. And negotiate that in. Even if you can get the half fund. of it. Exactly. And I think they should be willing to help. If they're if you're a great candidate and you seem like a real sharp guy, they should offer something with a cross country mm-hmm. move. Yeah. We lost him. He I think he's flabbergasted gone. by I that. He, I think he was stunned by the the level of detail you gave him there. All right, let's go to Cheyenne. Why? But can I just tell you something, George? You I've can. never been to Wyoming, and I'd I've like heard to it's go. Beautiful. I hear good things, and I got a little excited when I saw Cheyenne, Wyoming, on there. Dave is there. Dave, how can we help? Uh, yes, sir. Our household income is around nine hundred thousand dollars a year. We live on two hundred thousand of that. We don't have any debt. Um, I hope not. I was going to say, that was what I was expecting you to say when you're socking away 700 k a year. That's pretty good. Well, we've been married 12 years and not had debt since our third year of marriage. Way to go. Um, I assume your house is paid for as well. Yes, correct. Okay. Um, I want to know how to maximize our retirement savings with the greatest tax benefit. And at that income level, can I contribute to a mega raw doing the back door? So you've got a few options, and, and this is for any high income earners out there. You don't have to make nine hundred thousand. Even if you make two hundred fifty thousand, this these might be options you can look into. So you do have a four hundred one k through your employer? No, I'm self employed. My wife has a four hundred one k through her employer. Okay. Um, as a, as someone who's self employed, are you doing any investing through that? Do, have you set up a solo four hundred one k or a a SEP, anything like that? No, I'm just contributing, um, I think it was $7,500 to my, I have a Roth account, which I've not contributed to lately. I have a traditional 401k that I rolled over, and then I have just an individual brokerage account. Okay. And so I've just been putting $7,500 a year in that. from. Well, myself. you've got to be doing a backdoor Roth IRA with that making that kind of money. So I need to do that. That is an option. You need to, legally. You cannot contribute to a Roth IRA with that kind of income. What you can do is use after-tax money to fund a traditional IRA, and then you can immediately convert it to a Roth with no penalty. So here, I'm going to set you up with with a team because that's what you need. With this kind of income and this kind of money, you don't want to play games and try to just DIY it and hope for the best. So number one, go to RamseySolutions.com and click on Trusted Pros. Number one, you need a great tax pro. And we've got those, Ramsey Trusted Tax Pros at RamseySolutions.com. They're going to help you minimize taxes with that kind of income. The second thing you need is a SmartVestor Pro. These are the investing pros we trust to help our folks navigate the wealth journey. And it's not just choosing funds. There's a lot at stake here when it comes to tax planning, estate planning, college planning, you name it. And so they're going to help you figure out the options that are right for you that are legal for you to take. But I'll tell you just on a quick radio call, Of course, filling up the tax advantage accounts is going to be your best bet. So Roth 401ks, anytime you see Roth, that's great. That's after-tax money, grows tax-free. The next best bet is to look into a backdoor Roth IRA and a mega backdoor Roth, which is where you use a 401k and contribute after-tax money into the 401k, and then you can roll it over, similar to the backdoor Roth IRA. Beyond that, do you guys have an HSA, a health savings account? My wife does to her employer. I do not. Do okay. My- so with that HSA, you you can also contribute there and beyond a threshold of about a thousand bucks, you can invest. And when you're 65, that can turn into a traditional 401k. Essentially, you can use that money for things outside of medical expenses. So beyond all of that, the brokerage account is your best bet, where there's no tax advantages, but there's no income limits, no contribution limits. Yeah. That's the Spark Notes. But again, reach out to that team, yeah. RamseySolutions.com, and they can help. Yeah. Yeah, a smart investor and a tax advi- tax pro would be absolutely your number one option here. Good problems to have. Oh, yeah, you're going to love it. He's going to love the plan they developed for him, so really good stuff. All right, that's going to do it for this hour. Thank you, thank you to George Campbell. Thank you, America, for listening. This is The Ramsey Show.
Jeremy is in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Hi, Jeremy. How hey, are good you? Afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me on. Sure. How can I help? Uh, so uh, my question is regarding some financial anxiety that I'm going through. Um, I married my amazing wife in 2020, and we've been on fire. We paid off $90,000 in debt, and last summer we just paid off our house. And you're probably thinking, where's the anxiety coming from? And I guess I was expecting like an office space moment where I've got financial freedom and no carries, no worries. And what I'm finding out is when I paid off the house, I went the bank account went from two hundred and thirty thousand down to fifty thousand. And it just had me kind of shook. I'm not sure what steps I should be doing and I'm afraid to even move at this point. I'm just so your anxiety is because you have less money in your account? Correct. I'm afraid to be I'm afraid to be wrong. Like I know where we came from with the ninety thousand dollars in debt and I'm afraid I, I don't know what to do with it, like where to move. I know I'm baby seven. Ninety thousand included well. paying off your mortgage or that on top your mortgage on top of that? Oh, uh, on top of that. Ninety thousand was uh just uh, regular debt okay. and then then how the much was the mortgage? Was how much? The mortgage was hundred and eighty five thousand. Okay, so $275,000 has been paid off since the COVID quarantine and you got married. Correct. And you didn't die. Correct. A lot of stress. What do you do for a living? I'm a federal contractor. Yeah, God kind of, almighty. Kind of feels like you've been running with your hair on fire for three years and you finally just don't have anything to be on fire about and it scared you. Uh, that's probably correct, yes. So here's a weird thing. I wish it wasn't the case, man, but here's what our, our bodies solve for the nerd word is homeostasis. It likes the way things have always been. And that's why when somebody knocks off 50 or 60 or 70 pounds, if they haven't made an entire environment change, changed their life, changed their identity, I am now somebody who does X, Y, or Z, their body will scratch and claw that 50, 60, 70 pounds back on because that's what it knows. And your body knows fight or flight, run, war. It's all coming down. It has never practiced peace. Peace. And so, dude, you're not crazy. You're not nuts. Your anxiety alarms are ringing off the hook as they should be because you are in uncharted water. You just don't know what to do when, when, you're not, when the water's not dumping over the side of the boat, when it's just calm and chill. And it's just it's going to be a season you're going to have to practice. And you have to learn how to be still, not create chaos, because there's none being created for you. Right? Right. And it sounds like uh, I know what I'm talking about, because this is the pot talking to the kettle. It's good to meet you, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you do think about, I wasn't kidding around, what all you did in the beginning of a pandemic and out the back end of a quarantine and a pandemic when uh, when we were all an unprecedented oh god i hate that word um now uh, uh stress levels and in the middle of that you went ahead and got married so let's add some stress in the middle of that you went ahead and paid off two hundred seventy five thousand dollars and completely revolutionized your life which means you turned up the burners to uh, the highest possible heat um, while you were in all of these other burners and the water was already boiling a and all of a sudden it all just went off and got quiet. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I think I'm just looking to find out what I should be doing now. I guess, I guess I know it investing, but we both have Roth IRA. She has a pension. So I'm just, I'm not sure what to you, do now. You, you don't know what to do. Just breathe. Chill. That's and, it. And start investing and being outrageously generous. You're a hundred percent debt free. Make snow angels in your front yard. What's your what's your household income? Um, one fifty before tax. With no payments. Right. Take your shoes off and go walk around the backyard. That grass is yours. Shh. Now all that crap you used to pay payments on, let's take those payments and put them in investments. Fill up your 401k, fill up your Roth, fill up your envelope that says random acts of generosity and catch the single mom pumping gas with the kids with the frayed clothes and her tires are bald as a baby's butt. Roll the car over to the car tire place next door and put four tires on her car and fill it up and have the oil changed and pay cash for it and smile and walk away and she'll never know who did it because you're God's angel that day because you now have money. 
How's that sound? Sounds great. Yeah. Here's a, a common thing that happens is we think, and, and again, like getting out of debt is a, is a core tenet of not being anxious. But we often forget that wherever we end up, we go with us. And so if you thought there was going to be some magic wand that suddenly you were going to like yourself or suddenly you were going to not have any more shame from when you were a kid or suddenly your dad was going to call you and tell you how proud he was and that call ain't coming, being debt-free will set you free from anybody, any external chains that got you. But it may be now you can do the work that you need to do to heal. Right, stuff you've been crap you've been carrying around for a long, long time. Yeah, that's that's possible. It gets really quiet, then the voices kick up. Exactly. It, it's it's like a you've experienced this. I haven't. I've just met with countless couples whose the last kid moves out, and that house gets quiet. Mm-hmm. And now we got to learn how to have a new kind of life because it's different now. You know, we planned so intentionally that the party just began when they <laughs> left. <laughs> We're like. Ah, uh, he's gone finally. Somebody, <laughs> somebody Daniel is, he really like, gone? is your mom carrying a disco ball into the house? Is he really yep. gone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, but I, hey, let's let's like just full disclosure. You and I, I've, I've asked you off air as my life has transitioned since I've I've taken this job. Like I, I, there's a, there's a, dis, there's a discomfort with the newness of not running for my life anymore and not feeling like the whole world's coming down. Yeah. Being able to love my wife and not being panicked in the middle of the night when she's asleep. It's six o'clock. Go home. We don't work at seven. It's, yeah. Go home here. You know, yeah. that, that's, there, there's, it's an intentional act, but the thing is, it's just, it's like if you're driving down the road at a hundred miles an hour and then you slow down to 55, it seems like you're crawling. <laughs> 